What's up guys, hi, how are you? Um, Monday here at the office, I wanted to do a really good video on what I can share on the food business because I've been getting a lot of comparisons on my post about what's better for a business, a food business, a restaurant, a food cart, or an investment. So I'm gonna go through a couple of ideas and maybe walk you through. If you were to start a food business or a food cart business, I can give you some insight if you were to invest into that or maybe in an investment that could be more much more easier for you, so you don't have to do the work. So let's just give you a background on myself. I'm 36 years old. I've been in the business in food, and actually at eight years old, I was already in the business. My mom started a bakery in, in the States, in Long Beach, California. So I've been around food. I know how much work it takes, what type of hustle, you know, I have to wake up at four in the morning. And when we had a bakery, I used to wake up four in the morning, go to the bakery, put together the bread, because you need it to rise and make sure it was properly, uh, what do you call that? You have to put it in a proofer, and the proofer takes another hour. So when you bake it, it takes another hour. So there's a lot of work in the food business. And after that, I learned so much, so much about the operations, how to clean a, clean a store, how to make a proper presentation, you know, how to sell. So I actually worked in every level of the bakery. And later when I got older, I actually started a couple of restaurants. I wasn't the operator. I was more of an investor. And I also started a couple of nightclubs. One of, one of them is called Embassy Republic. Uh, we partnered in with a couple of restaurants, Arakama. And my mom also did a lot of uh, franchises with Jollibee. So I'm gonna give you a couple ideas. Maybe here I can show you, is it good to do a food business or is it good to park your money in an investment? So there's a theory about if I invest in a food cart or food business, I'll be instantly rich. So I'll give you a myth. First, in, before starting a food business, A, I want you to think about it. Do you have the capital? Capital means that you don't only have the money for the franchise fee, there is a franchise fee involved. The equipment, of course. People forget that you need capital for the operational expense. What is the operational expense? People don't realize when you invest into a space, you have to pay a mall about two months advance, two months security deposit, or maybe sometimes six months, depending on the mall location. So that takes a lot of money out of your capital. People under project and say, look, I have the franchise fee is only this and the cart is only 500,000. You forget about the mall space, you forget about the staff, you forget about you know, supply expenses as well as your just basic you know, back office stuff. So number one thing is you need to have capital and people usually fail because they don't have enough capital. You should have capital for enough for 12 months or one year to run on. So when you invest and you project, how much money do I need so I don't you know, run out because there are months that you might not make money. There are some months that you might be break even. And there's some months you, you know, you make money. So number two, and this is an another reason why people fail in the, in the food business. You don't have the discipline. So usually in the, in the food business, you need a super disciplined mind. There are a lot of people who get so excited the first day of having a food business, but they are not willing to stay in a store or in, in a location, stand in the mall and open and close a store. And I used to do that. I used to actually open a store, count the money and see how much money for change and close the store and see how, count the money again. Do you have the discipline to do that? A lot of people think it's all about just, you know, opening up and money will pour. And that's kind of like what I thought. So you need to have the discipline to do the daily grind. And part of that is, are you willing to do this for successfully three to five years? Why? Because you really build wealth third, fourth, fifth year. You don't build ROI on, on your first year. So discipline is very key. Three is experience. When I wanted to get into the food business, I actually uh, interned for chefs, interned for restaurants. I used to wake up five in the morning, go to a restaurant back then, it's called Tequila Joe's, and back then I was just cutting onions all day. But I was seeing how they prep in the morning. And sometimes you have to have the experience, like what do you know about running a restaurant? What do you know about running a, a mall location? What do you know about all these things? So what I realized is that you need to actually know a little bit of something and master it. Operations, sales, HR, back office, accounting. All of that you have to take, it, uh, you know, take in, into consideration because people don't even understand that a business is really a lot of moving parts. And you know, do you have marketing? 
So if you're into some business, you have a plan for your marketing and sales. So people forget that you need to market, you have to invite people, you have to invite people to your restaurant. And if your product sucks, I'm sorry, you know, people don't go. So they always say nine out, nine out of 10 businesses are not around after they open up. Think about it, make sure you have the right experience. Four, you have to have the right team. Who's on your team? Part of the business is building a super successful team. I think a lot of businesses, they think it's a one man person. There might be one person who's like the top, who's seen, but he has a team. He has a team of amazing people who are running operations, admin, accounting, staffing, HR, marketing, sales, strategy, you know, supply chain. So you gotta think who's on your team. It's great to scale, but even when you build some type of a scalable food cart or food business, who's on your team. Always ask advice from people who are doing it. Maybe spend time with them, get some mentorship, get some internship, you know, just observe. And that's what happens when you're really rushing just to make money and not build experience. And they say, you know what? This food business is a scam. I thought I was gonna make money. And sometimes people do try to sell you the dream, but they don't realize it's not really just the, the food uh, concept. Sometimes it's more than that. Maybe it's a lot of other things. So last, which I think is really key is location. You know, I say location, location, location. In your business, you need traffic, you need sales, you need people to walk through it. Does your location have this? Because the more exposure you have, it's just like the internet, you have traffic. The more locations you have and the better locations you have, it can make or break you. And sometimes people don't know, they just say yes to any locations. They'll say yes to any outdoor, indoor locations. Think about it. Do you need uh, a location with water? Does your location have a bathroom? Does your location have storage? Does your location have electricity? Can I fry my food in this location? Is it open air? You gotta think about, if you were to do this, how will my staff feel and is this business viable in my location? So now that I gave you some ideas and tips about you know starting a food cart or food business, these are the things I think that you should think about before you step in. If you have any, any questions, email, comment me, PM me, or leave a you know, comment below. I'm more happily to give you advice you know, if you have any questions. So again, you have to have the capital. Make sure you have capital for about 12 months. Make sure you have the checklist. There's like so many you know, books about this. Discipline, this is something you gotta work on. This is mindset. Uh, experience, you know, get a collective people who can you know, give you the proper you know, advice and you know, shadow them. Who's your dream team? Make sure your team supports you and you support your team. Location. So this is actually one of my you know, things I've been wanting to talk about since a lot of people say, the easiest thing I know is to do food business. Great, it's also the highest rate and failure to do any type of business. So if you were to, if you were also thinking, if you were to do food cart, what if you have to compare you know, time if you can just invest your money into that, into a mutual fund and see, maybe I don't wanna run a, uh, a food cart. Maybe I can just sit in a mutual fund or buy, I always say, would you rather run a store or buy a, a stock of the company, like a Jollibee or McDonald's or whatever. So sometimes the smartest people just park their money and buy a mutual fund, a stock, and just sit on it. I think that's what smart people really do is like, they don't want to be so eager in operating thousands of stores. They want to see the money grow. They want a great return and they just make money while they sleep. So this is the lazy way to make money. So look at the, the concept that you like and look at the stock. You know, if I, I parked this money five years ago, how much would it be? Well, this is all headaches because there's more elements involved. So hope I gave you insight. Again, leave some questions, comments and share if you like the video. Peace.